Just a few months ago in January, Qatar Airways CEO Akbar Al Baker was in the midst of his very public dispute with Airbus over composite skin and paint defects on their A350s. But it was also in January that, in a retaliatory strike against Al Baker, that Airbus very publicly canceled a firm order worth billions for 50 Airbus A321 Neos, further escalating the war between Airbus and Qatar Airways. And this is where Boeing enters the picture. Since Qatar was now without its single-aisle NEO option, Boeing said, Hey, Al Baker, we just so happen to have the 737 MAX 10, which coincidentally was built specifically to go head-to-head -head against the A321 NEO. But even though it hadn't flown yet, nor was it yet certified to fly, Qatar said yes to the MAX. Soon after, the two very publicly strolled hand-in-hand -hand to the White House to have a huge signing party celebrating Qatar's purchase of 50 Boeing MAX 10s plus 34 uncertified 777 wide-body jets as icing on the cake. And so the deal was done, and indeed the deal had the desired effect both parties wanted. Boeing's stock rose and interest in the MAX 10 was renewed. Now Baker's unexpected decision sent shockwaves throughout Airbus, as I'm sure was his goal. However, However, as some of you may recall at the time when I made my video on the Boeing Qatar deal, that I wasn't buying this fairy tale for a minute. This deal smelled rotten from the beginning. Well, you know the famous saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Well, I think this is exactly what brought Boeing and Qatar together back in January. And I'm going to tell you why I think this whole deal was a show pony from the beginning. That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well, wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. Okay, so before I start, I want to say this because I know some of you are thinking it already. Do I, Maximus, believe Qatar and Boeing actually conspired and plotted to screw Airbus? Of course not. But I do think you will agree by the end of this video that Airbus and Qatar saw an opportunity that would be beneficial to both companies and rattle Airbus in the process. So if anybody was reaching for their tinfoil conspiracy hats, you can relax. Okay, so as most of us know, Airbus and Qatar Airways have been embroiled in a bitter court battle over their A350's composite skin and lightning protection issues. And while the case isn't scheduled to be heard until early 2023, there are still hearings and filings and motions taking place in the meantime. So this week, Reuters announced some pretty big news coming out of a London court regarding the lawsuit, but not about Airbus, about Boeing. But why would they be talking about Boeing? They're not involved in the lawsuit. Well, Boeing's name came up in court because of their blockbuster January Max 10 deal with Airbus. The deal signed in Washington in January is part of a series of interlocking agreements caught up in the Airbus Qatar lawsuit. The revelation came to light when Airbus requested a copy of the Boeing 737 MAX agreement after Qatar brought it up as part of its bid for compensation for damage to the A350s. However, Qatar Airways initially resisted the request to provide a copy of the MAX sale agreement on the grounds that the provisional Boeing deal had expired. Did you catch that? The deal had expired. And that one word expired. That was and is the big headline in the world of aviation this week. But what difference does it make to the Airbus Qatar lawsuit if the Boeing deal is expired or not? Well, it doesn't. Not legally, anyway. When the Boeing deal was first inked back in January, it was a big deal. So big, in fact, the President of the United States attended the signing event, and politicians on both sides hailed the event as a win for Boeing and America, which indeed it was at the time. However, however, the reason Airbus was caught off guard by the fact that the boeing Qatar deal expired is that neither Boeing nor Qatar disclosed the fact that it had expired. No big announcement, no fanfare, not even a press release. Nothing. So do you see the juxtaposition there? Huge fanfare at the signing, but not a word when the deal collapsed. But still, even after Qatar signed the Boeing deal in January, they continued pleading with the court in London to force Airbus to reinstate their original A321 NEO deal. But that seems odd, because with all the MAX 10 jets they ordered, why would they need the NEOs? Well, maybe it's because they knew all along they weren't seriously interested in the MAX. Because I think this was just a negotiation ploy to see if Qatar could get Airbus to move off its position. 
But in late April, the court ruled that Airbus could indeed ship those 50 planes destined for Qatar to other airlines. So now Qatar doesn't have the Neo or the MAX 10. Huh. Well, that's interesting. So that brings us to Boeing and the MAX 10. I'm working on another video this week about how Dave Calhoun, Boeing's CEO, has informed the U.S. Congress that Boeing is prepared to scrap the 737 MAX 10 project if certification isn't granted. So what exactly is Calhoun attempting to do with this rather odd threat? Well, the same thing he did with Qatar when he sold them 50 MAX 10 jets that he and Al Baker knew weren't going to fly or even be certified, perhaps for years. Just as he did in January with Qatar, Calhoun is doing now with Congress. He's stalling. He's buying time and making headlines. Calhoun is using Congress just like Al Baker used Calhoun, and Calhoun used Al Baker. So I'm convinced that there's no way a shrewd businessman like Al Baker even for one minute intended to purchase the MAX 10 jets. And the same applies to Calhoun. He knew he would never deliver one MAX 10 jet to Qatar. However, however, as I said, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And in this case, the enemy is and was Airbus. As I said, that fake jet sale between Boeing and Qatar got the desired effect for both Qatar and Boeing. But now, what will happen to Qatar? They need a small single aisle jet and the MAX is obviously out of the running and the courts told Airbus they can sell Qatar's jets. So what is Al Baker going to do? He's going to do what he was always going to do. He's going to buy the Airbus Neos and he's going to take delivery of the A350s after the lawsuit gets settled in 2023. But he's going to get some of what he wanted in discounts and Airbus is going to get some of what they wanted in vindication for their flagship A350. And as for the Boeing MAX 10, who knows? Stay tuned. But this is all just speculation on my part. That's why I'm excited to head on down to the comment section after this. I want to know what you think. Is old Maximus a crazy conspiracy nut or maybe am I onto something with my theory? I won't know until you tell me. So light it up down there and let me know down below. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now. Oh, and Dennis, thanks for the coffees. And if you want to help support the channel, the Buy Me A Coffee and merch links are always in the description. And if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.